In Africa, they found perfectly normal human footprints in a layer of ash that had turned to stone. Perfectly normal human footprints. But the footprints were in ash, supposed to be three and three-quarter million years old. They studied the footprints and said, wow, these footprints are exactly the same as ours today. Russell Tuttle, University of Chicago, studied the footprints carefully. He went and found a place where people never wear shoes. They never wear shoes, ever. And he studied their footprints. He had them run through the mud, walk through the mud, you know, jog through the mud, trot, skip. He said the footprints of these people that never wear shoes are exactly like the footprints found in Laetoli, Africa. Identical. And then he said, if the Laetoli footprints were not known to be so old, we would conclude they were made by a member of our own genus. In other words, if we didn't know better, we would think a human made these. Well, how do you know better? Oh, because the rock is too old. This is an example of where the evolution theory is a hindrance to common sense and to scientific research. It's one of the greatest hindrances to science. It's not part of science. It's counterproductive to science. The National Geographic put human ape, human ape like mixture features on these uh, creatures walking through this ash. Now, keep in mind, not one bone was found. No bones are found. If you find perfectly normal human footprints, what would justify you putting dark skinned, ape like creatures walking there on your drawing? And if I was African American, I'd get upset that they always use dark skin on the missing links. Like there's some kind of, you know, darker skin is less evolved. <laughs> That's what they're trying to imply here. And why did they add this toe separation? Notice the big toe is separated away from the rest of them on the picture. They did it on purpose because it's a real serious problem going from an ape-like foot to a human foot. Apes have a toe that sticks off to the side like a thumb. That's so they can grab a, tr a tree branch and hang by their back feet. You can't do that. Okay? If you want to practice it, I'd suggest you start on a low branch for practice. Okay? <laughs> You're going to hurt your head. But here they have four million years of bipedalism. And they gave every one of these so-called missing links human feet. Because the foot is a serious problem for the evolutionist. Charles Oxnard studied Lucy and said, the bones of Lucy represent an animal that is not in the line of humans. It's not a missing link. He did a computer multivariant analysis of the bones, okay? There could be these creatures, the little ape-like creatures that walk upright, still alive in Sumatra today. Lucy may represent an animal that is still alive. Peking man was used for years as evidence for evolution. Everything disappeared during World War II. But they found a cave with a bunch of crushed monkey skulls in there. The skull had been smashed, and they found a bunch of human tools. And so some brilliant scientist said, wow, these monkeys are learning to make tools. Oh, and they're practicing on their head. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Let's keep that one right over here. Well, duh. They didn't tell anybody they found 10 normal humans in the same cave, skeletons of humans. See, in some cultures, they like to eat monkey brains. You ever seen Indiana Jones? Mm -hmm. They just found a cave where they were eating monkeys. That's where they had their feasts or something. It's not a missing link. Homo erectus is still in the textbooks. Homo erectus used to be called Java man. Then they changed it to Pithecanthropus erectus and now called Homo erectus. It was found by Dr. Dubois, a Dutch anatomist, who went to Indonesia purposely to try to find missing links. He hired a bunch of prison convicts to go dig for him. He wasn't even there when they found it. What they found was an ape's skull cap, three human teeth, and a thigh bone found a year later, 50 feet away. Dubois, Dubois put them all together and said, we have a missing link here. You don't even know those animal bones go together. Three teeth, thigh bone, and a skull cap from an ape. This was also going to be used in 1925 as evidence for evolution at the Scopes Monkey Trial. The Java Man. The famous anatomist uh, Virchow said, In my opinion, this creature is, a, is an animal, a giant gibbon. In fact, the thigh bone has not the slightest connection with the skull. Dubois hid the fact that he found two human skulls in the same area. He put those under his bed under the floor. Like Edgar Allan Poe, you know, telltale heart, only this was telltale head. But there's no evidence of how man evolved at all. Fossil evidence for evolution for uh, humans is fragmentary. Fossil evidence of chimpanzee evolution is absent altogether. There is no evidence of how chimpanzees evolved. But yet you have articles in the magazines all the time, you know, about evolution. Where are we going? I can tell you that. You're going straight to hell if you don't accept Christ. It's real simple. That's a no-brainer. In Skull, they were going to have a big display of the orc man. Orse, O-R, 
C.E., the horse man. They were going to put the, have a big you know, a party for the horse man they discovered until they discovered it's actually a piece of a skull fragment from a donkey four months old. That was going to be the missing link. A dolphin's rib had been labeled as human collarbone in the museum for a long time. So somebody said, oh, that's a dolphin's rib. That's not a human collarbone. The Hobbit was just found here in 19, or 2004. The Hobbit was a little bitty, tiny human, probably a result of uh, secondary microcephaly dwarfism. Just a normal human, about three and a half feet tall. There are people like that today running around the planet. Okay? There's a good book on the so-called cavemen, if you want to read this, if you're being taught this in school. Get the book by Marvin Lubinow, Bones of Contention. Excellent book. It'll really put everything into perspective for you. The only missing link I can find is up between these guys' ears. You know, something is missing. Somebody's professors spend all their free time digging in the dirt looking for bones. My dog does the same thing. But we don't make the taxpayers pay his salary while he does it, okay? This textbook says he's the daddy of us all. Oh, that's silly. You don't know he's the daddy of anybody. You find bones in the dirt, you don't know it's the daddy of anybody. It's just the mother of all mammals from the Smithsonian. If you find bones, you don't know it's the mother of anything. See, if you find fossil in the dirt, all you know is it died. You couldn't prove it had any kids, and you sure couldn't prove it had different kids. And why would you think a bone you found in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do, which is produce something other than their kind? No fossil would count as evidence in a court of law, as evidence for evolution in a court of law. So where does a stone age fit into the Bible? Was there ever a stone age? Well, right after the flood, Noah couldn't tell his grandson to go to the hardware store and get him a shovel. There were no hardware stores. They had a devastated society, folks. They got off the ark and everything outside is destroyed. You have to totally rebuild civilization. They had a Gilligan's Island situation. You got a bunch of smart people. Well, Gilligan's Island did not have a bunch of smart people. You know, maybe one. But they're on this d devastated planet. So they're going to have to rebuild from scratch, and you're going to make stone tools. Because that's much quicker than digging the iron ore out, smelting it down, and making an iron tool. You know, by the time it takes you three weeks to make your axe, you're going to starve to death, okay? So they're going to make stone tools. And people that are driven out of society are going to travel around in small herds and packs following, uh, following uh, migrating animals, and they don't want to carry 50 pounds worth of stone tools with them. It's quicker to make your stone tools on the job site. You follow the mammoths until you catch up with them or the buffalo, and then you quick make your tools, kill the buffalo or the mammoth, and you butcher it and leave your tools behind and go on someplace else. And then we today find these stone tools and say, wow, look at this Clovis point. Wow, perfectly shaped, perfectly balanced. This guy is smart. This is an advanced civilization. And then they find another arrowhead, arrowhead that looks kind of crude, you know, and it's not chipped very smoothly. And they say, wow, this guy's pre-human. You're not quite as smart. You know, maybe you got the whole wrong perspective on that. Maybe the one that looks kind of crude was found by a guy who's in a bigger hurry because the mammoth is getting away, okay? He just doesn't have time to sit there and play with his arrowhead for an hour. He wants to go shoot the thing now before it runs off. So it might be an example of how much time they have to spend on it. Not at all an example of their intelligence, all right?